this lecture introduces linear equations and the strict triangular form of linear equations. First, definitions of linear equations. So a linear equations, right, assist a linear equations in n unknowns. So if you have n variables in an equations, in a linear equation, then a linear equation in n unknown variable is an equation of the form b equals to a sub 1 x sub 1 plus a sub 2 x sub 2 plus um, a sub n x sub n, where b and a1, a2 to a n are real numbers and x1, x2 to x n are the variables. Okay. So, and then you, you know that a1, a2 to a n are the coefficients of x1, x2 to xn correspondingly. So then once you have a, a linear equations, then you can combine uh, different linear equations in the same variables into a system, which is called a system of linear equations. So if you expand one equation into m different equations, you will have a system of m equations in n unknowns. And the system is as a form, right? So in the system here, you have m number of equations. And each of the equation, you have n variable x1, x2 to xn. Then on the right side of these equations, you have constants, just a constants, b1, b2 to bm. Or again, x11, x12, x21, x22, and so on and so forth, are the coefficients of these variables in these equations. Okay. Once you have a linear of system of equations, then you can talk about a solution set for the system. So a solution set of a system of m equations and n unknowns is an, an order n tuple of numbers, right? x1, x2 to xn that are satisfied all the equations of the system. For example, if you have a, a m equations, right, with n unknowns, then your solution set will be set of this real numbers and you have n uh, values for n variables, right? And once you substitute each value of x1, x2 to xn in your situation, in your system, then it satisfies the system. And then when you work with uh, a system of linear equations, your solutions will fall into exactly one of the following categories. So you either has no solution, the system either has no solutions, or the system has at least one solutions. Okay, either no solution or at least one solution. In the, in the, um, and if the system has no solution, it is called inconsistent system. And if you have at least one solution, then the system is called consistent system. So in the consistent system, there's two different uh, scenarios. You might have only one solutions, or you will have infinitely many solutions. Again, if your system is inconsistent, that means you have no solutions, right? But then if you find out that your system, your system is consistent, then there's two scenarios for the system, for a, a, a consistent system. The first scenario is the solutions is unique, which means you only have one solutions. The second scenario is you have infinite, infinitely many solutions. You will have never run into a case or you will have, you will not will be able to find a linear system that you will have a finite number of solutions. That is not one, okay? So in linear system of equations, 
you have either one or many, many solutions. If your system is consistent, if it's not consistent, then you have no solutions. Okay, so um, I can make a diagram. Let's, let's try to see a diagram. So you have a, a system, right? System of uh, linear equations. So you either have, um, you run into the case where your system is inconsistent or your system is consistent. So inconsistent, they have no uh, solutions, right? And in the consistent system, you will have either one solutions, a unique solutions or infinitely many solutions. So there's only um, three possible cases, inconsistent, one solution or infinitely many solutions. All right, so that's why when you work with a, a system of linear equations, for sure you wanna find the solution set for that system. There's only two basic questions that you wanna ask. Whether the, um, the existence of the solutions, that mean whether the system has a solution or not, right? The system is consistent. or inconsistent. So that's the first question. And then if the system is consistent, you wanna ask whether the solution is unique. If the system is consistent. All right, well, let's look at um, the first example. So the first examples here represent three showing provides three uh, systems, two by two system, which means you have two equations in each system and you have two variable in each equation. Okay, now I wanna go ahead and write, we know how to solve for this system, uh, the two by two system. And we want to give a, a GR, geometrical interpretations of each system. So x1 plus x2 equals one. Two x1 minus x2 equals two. two. Remember, uh, we can use either substitution or elimination method to solve the system. I wanna use the elimination method. I wanna add the two system together, like the two equation together. Um, I take x1 plus two x1 is three x1, right? x2 minus x2 is 0, x2 equals 1 plus 2 is 3. The reason why I want to use the uh, eliminations because I know that if I add the two equations together, I will eliminate x2. And then I keep one of the equations, the simple one. Then we'll, that will give me x3, e x1 equals 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1. Then using this one, you have x2 equals 2, 0. Okay, so this is the solution for the system. And how many solutions you have? You have one solutions, one, zero. All right, for the second um, system, I have two x1 plus x2 equals three, six x1 plus three x2 equals nine. Again, I wanna use eliminations uh, because if I multiply the first equations, I will get 6x1 plus 3x2 plus equals 9, right? For the first one, and I say, oh, this equation is just the same as this equation. So if I multiply 3, uh, multiply the first equation by 3, and then I, I take the first equation, subtract the second equation, I would have, because they are the same, right? They are um, Two, these two equations here are the same. So after I multiply the first equation, I got the second equation, and then I can subtract the two equation, I got zero plus zero, zero x1, zero x2 equals to zero. And I keep one of the equations, keep the simple one. And that means zero equals plus zero equal to zero. That's true, right? So then I don't have to worry about the first one, and I just need to have the 
to look at the second one. Now that I have two variables in one uh, equation, that means I can just solve this system by setting uh, one, solve one variable as the other one. So I solve, let's see, I solve x2 equals 2, 3 minus 2x1. So this is my um, solutions here, right? And since I have two variables, but just one equations, that means whatever value I put for x1, I find another value for x2. So that means I would have infinite many solutions. Well, because I have infinite many possible value for x1. Thus, I will have infinite many corresponding value for x2. Thus, the system has infinite many solutions, right? For x1 in R, um, x2 equals 2, 3 minus 2, x1. Infinite many solutions. All right, so go to the next system here. So this next system, I have um, x1 minus x2 equals to 3, 3x1 minus 3x2 equals to 4, and I see that the ratio of x1 and x2 in these two equations are proportionately. That means if I multiply the first equation to x3, I, uh, uh, to three, I will get three x one minus three x two equals two nine, right? So I look at this new equation here with the second equation. The the left sides are the same, but the right side are not. And then I would do the next step when I take uh, I take the difference between these two equations. So I have zero x one plus zero x two equals two nine minus four is five, and I keep the first equations. Okay, at this point, zero, if we look at the first equation here, when I subtract the new um, equation from the first equation uh, by the second equation, I get zero plus zero equals to five, which is false. If you have a false statement, that means this system here is inconsistent, right? You have no solutions. So this case, you have no solution. This case, you have infinite many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. And the first case, you have a unique solutions. So if you have a system of two equations with two variables, you can think of the system in a uh, two-dimensional space, right? You have x, y coordinate here. If you have a unique solutions and, and then each of this equation here is actually a line in an x, y coordinate in a two-dimensional space, um, then each of this equation is a line. And then if you have two lines and if the, the you have only one solution for the system, that means these two lines here intersect each other at one point, intersect at one point, right? So that's for unique solutions of a two by two systems uh, equation. Um, if you have a unique solution, that means the two lines uh, here intersect at one point. What if you have infinite many solutions? If you have infinite many solutions, that means the two lines here are actually the same line. So they just, um, one is on the top of the other one of another one so there's the second here the first one here okay and if you don't have any solutions that mean the two lines here are parallel they never meet each other at anywhere so if you have no solutions um two by two system that means you have two lines that are parallel so this is like just a simple um solution set for uh, a three of the two by two system of linear equations. And in each of the system here, you will see the, uh, the geometrical interpretations of the system are different. And then based on the type of the solution set, you know right away whether um, the solutions is unique. If it's unique, then that means the two lines intersect at one point. If uh, you have infinite many solutions, that means the two lines are just the same or they're just on the top of each other. And if the two, if the solution for a system is, uh, has no solutions, that means the two line, right? If we work in the, uh, if we're working on 
if, if we were if we are in a two-dimensional space, that means the two lines are parallel because they never meet each other.